people that will achieve big things are people that will be criticized by people. If you are not to be criticized, do nothing, say nothing and be nothing. But you will be nothing uh, in, the end, in the end of your life. Today, I'm chatting with Yang Berhormat Yo Bi Yin, Member of Parliament and Malaysia's youngest female minister in the multi-departments of energy, science, technology, environment and climate change. A chemical engineer by profession, she studied in Cambridge and is today a household name in our country. Respected by many for her committed passion in nation building. Biyin, thank you for joining me today. I am your host, Pauline. Welcome to TAW Real Chat, where life's insights are shared. You also have a lot of people that criticize you. I, I tell you, uh, there, is a natural, there is a natural tendency of people. 100 people praise you. Uh, if there is one or two person criticize you, you actually take the critics mm. much more than, uh, than the 100 people who, who, who praise you. You. But so through the years, you know, you there's so much of criticism, uh, very unfair. Uh, sometimes it's allegations, you know, very unfair. You, you ask yourself why you want to do this, right? You talked about criticism being so loud, even when they're two out of a hundred. How do you deal with that? Because as women, we have our critics, even when we're not in politics. And I think many of us struggle with criticism. Uh, yeah, yeah. Share with us how, how you deal with the criticism. Um, I remember 10 years ago when I first got elected, I, I think I cry every day, you know, people criticize you, everything, you know. Um, I cry every day, you know, I, you know. Um, but now, what, what I see is this, is that, you know, you cannot look at your naysayers. Huh? People are going, people are going just to criticize you. I really love what uh, Theodore Roosevelt has said. This is a quote from him. He said, it mm-hmm. is not the critics who counts. Um, Credit belongs to the men who are in the arena, you know, who keep their mm. hands dirty, who who actually trying to do something, who will fall short because there is no efforts without uh, shortcomings, uh, and that who eventually may or may not succeed in their pursuit, but at the end of the day, at least they are not coward. Uh, they they will not be placed at the place with the a cold and timid soul. So at least I'm not a co and timid. So you know, I, I, I definitely I, not. I, I, I definitely am pursuing something. The critics are co and timid, right? Mm. So what they can do? They are just criticizing the doers of this, trying to do something. You know, recently I just read a blog and just say that uh, your being a grammar is so bad. I wonder how she went to Cambridge and that she's arrogant. Blah 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 blah. Um. You know, I, do I feel sad? Yes. Well, but I'm Chinese ad. Uh, I can speak English. Can you speak Chinese? So, right. So, <laughs> you, 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 sometimes people will criticize you. But I think people that will achieve big things are people that will be criticized by people. You know, if you are not to be criticized, do nothing, say nothing and be nothing. And that you will be sure not to be criticized, but you will be nothing uh, in, the end, in the end of uh, my life, um, your life. So, so I want to be doing something that I'm passionate about. I, well, I, I will be criticized. Uh, I will be sad. I uh, undoubtedly be sad. But fix your eyes on the things that you want to do than on the next day years. After 10 years, my heart is a little bit more hardened. Uh, that that uh, that uh, when I first got elected and criticized you, you really cry, especially ladies, right? You you, yeah. wear, you you really care about what people think about you, you know. For sure. Um. So so so, but yeah. After ten years, I I get to be more stronger in in, in the face of all this criticism. Yeah. Wow. I mean that that's really profound. I, I I'm taking some personal notes here for myself. <laughs> But one other question that, that from what you are saying, right? You talk about the love for this country. You you were working overseas. You had a good paying job. You you were in Cambridge. I mean, you could get another even better paying job. And 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 your 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 mother even said to you, "Why are you doing this?" Right? Like, I mean, I, I read your book. I, I it's yeah. probably a good time, right, <laughs> to, to mention the unfinished business um, by Yo Bin. Um, so second book, uh, get a copy if you haven't. It's a very good book about um, 
the policies that we we should really take heart to heart. And she shares a few anecdotes as well from her book. Now, now, being you mentioned your mother said that to you too. You know, why choose the hard life, right? And 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 you had a good life, obviously. Where does the love for this country come from? Um, you know, and I I I when actually I was very a political person. I am not political when I was growing up. I was a kampung girl, you know. Um, that you know, in my village, in my town, small little town. Mm -hmm. uh, only until I was six or seven that uh, finally we have a female graduate, which who was happened who happened to be my aunt, auntie. You know, uh, in my growing up in a small town, uh, a small uh, girl like me did not have imagination on what that we would be a leader, country leader one day. You know, uh, only when I went into university and uh, I felt. Uh, strongly about this nation through a prayer movement where we pray for the country and slowly you know after five years of every time there is a mandeka season we will pray for the country pray different parts of the country i i felt there is a, a burden for me for this nation but i never i never wanted i never imagined myself to be a politician i know politics are important the closest i ever go to was was a was that let me marry a politician? You know, sometimes <laughs> you know you take shortcut. Uh, okay, you cannot be a doctor, right? You marry a doctor, la. You cannot be a lawyer, right? You marry a lawyer. So, so for me, politics is important. Um, I cannot be a politician because I'm a girl, you no, know, a, a, a a woman. Then you know, I may also marry one. You know, that's an Asian kind of uh, very. Uh, mind, uh, but it's you know, life has it that. Sometimes you can be the answer of your own prayer. You know, uh, I remember we pray for that people, uh, that there will be more leaders says, rising up. So, so I am part of the answer to, the, to that prayer. Sometimes we want change to happen uh, in this country. Some, it, it is, you know, we, we can also be part of those, um, those prayer and those wish uh, for, uh, uh, for us to the country. So I am very, uh, very non-political, even until I decided to come back to Malaysia. I just had a strong burden. I did not know what to do when I come back. I, I was very sad. My friends were earning a lot of money uh, and that I, I, I compare myself with all my friends uh, who are working in oil and gas company, earning quite a bit, some with the US company even more. And then I came back and then, um, trying to do something of the environment and uh, trying to do something that's on analytics and then all this um, really, I really do not know why I, I wanted to come back, but I struggle a little bit. But one day there is a, a revelation, you know, that, um, that made me decide that, you know, I should just stay here. Then through, just through accidents, I, go and volunteer. I went to volunteer in, uh, in DAP and then just, just amazing uh, things happened in between and all this. Uh, suddenly, I was asked to contest in uh, Damasara Otam. So I actually wrote about this in uh, my first book on uh, Reimagining Malaysia on how I went into politics. But uh, I, I'm really an accidental politician. Uh, accidental and, uh, politician. Uh, I'm now, I call myself a reluctant politician. Uh, so I will continue to persevere. For, for, for now, I continue to persevere. So, but through all this, I, I, think, um, I think that we must have a, a, a strong calling for, for this country. Any leaders who want to serve this country must, must, must be more than just one power. I have seen many politicians um, enter into politics that in the in hope to just for high position, uh, just for you know all these things. It made me very sad. It made me very sad that you know that perhaps perhaps uh, my the remaining of my time in politics, what I want to do is to raise more young leaders who have convictions to do what is good for the country. Who will enter into politics not being, not uh, thinking that they want to be YB, 
but who will enter into politics with a very pure intention of giving him or herself uh, best to serve this country. That, that will be my mission for the remaining of my time in politics, other than doing many other things as MPs and all this. Sure. Sure, that's very inspiring, and I think yeah, that's what we need, right? We need to be raising young leaders who, who, who care for the country and who love the country, and and that's been a strong calling for you to do nation build with so much love for the country. Eventually, it is still the same answer, you know, that I love my country. I want to do the best I can for for this country, and that whichever way I can contribute, uh, I want to contribute. Um, one last thing before we wrap. Yeah. Climate change and, and you, you, during your time as minister, you, you made headlines with, with two things, sending rubbish bag and yeah. plastic straws. Yeah. They were two very effective and simple campaigns. Uh, Can you educate us? Why is sending rubbish bag so important? Why, why is it such a big deal? Um, oh, it's a big deal because, because otherwise... It's not only Malaysia, uh, all the developing countries will, will also face the same thing uh, of uh, rubbish dumping from the developed world. Actually, what happened was that um, the China actually closed the door for all this recy- uh, plastic sent to recycle. They are the dumping ground of uh, uh, in China. So then China will then recycle cheaply and then send because that the pollution caused by the plastic recycling uh, of this this very contaminated plastic. So they decided to close the door. And that is when uh, Malaysia and the other developing countries are also facing the same thing. So my thought that time was that we sent back because we want to give a message to the developed world. We want to send an international message. Not only we were sending back, it's, it's, it's a symbol of saying that we are going to fight this dumping. And that it is also because we have the machinery. Malaysia, although it's a middle-income uh, country, I think um, we have enough machinery to be the voice for the developing countries because I met some other um, <clears throat> environment minister from at least developed world, some other countries. They also face the same dumping problem. The pro- but the problem is that their offices and their machineries, government machineries, are not enough to be the voice. So I decided that, you know, uh, we send back, we make sure that we become the voice and that we send a strong message. And after we send back actually a lot of international awareness from this, and then um, actually there is a convention change from it as well, international convention that came with it. And then there's a lot more things that happen and that now uh, there is more controlled movement of uh, plastics, uh, uh, plastics movement, plastic waste movement in the global. So, so I think, uh, so I think this one uh, is something that I think it's important and we will continue to do. Uh, we will continue not to let people to, to dump their rubbish to, to, to Malaysia. Isn't it amazing that you know this effort initiative that you started that has this rippling effect? I mean, I wasn't even aware of the rippling effect into the convention and, and, and at a more yeah, international yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and our Department of Environment won a United Nations uh, Environment uh, Recognition wow. for, for, for this for this effort. Uh, I wanted to to be pushing more strongly on uh, the international. Uh, global uh, the global movement of uh, plastic waste and I also wanted to also had planned to do more on the climate change international advocacy uh, as an environment minister for developing countries as well but we did not have enough time because we were 20 months in office unfortunately uh, so so that is why I wrote a book so, so a lot of uh, unfinished business uh, yes <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Hopefully, we'll be able to finish it. Bean, thank you so much for making the time in your very busy schedule to chat with us today. We appreciate it. And we uh, wish you all the best, Bean, in this coming elections. Thank you. Everyone, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you at our next Real Chat episode. Bye for now.